Hello and welcome once again to uh, Sportsline here on Daily Mirror Online. Uh, I'm your host Shehan Daniel and joining us today is uh, former national cricketer Russell Arnold, uh, who has become one of the most recognized uh, voices and faces of Sri Lanka cricket in his capacity uh, as international commentator. Uh, thanks for joining us today, Russell. Thanks for having me, guys. Um, we are quite used to regularly seeing you in your role as a commentator, so at a time like this, uh, when there isn't much cricket being played and there are COVID restrictions make it very hard to travel. Uh, how are you spending the extended downtime? Uh, do you find yourself having to pick certain assignments to take up, uh, you know, given all the restrictions that are in place? Uh, yes, things are a lot different. Um, generally, uh, we plan our time in a certain manner, but now we've got to factor in uh, maybe a month on either side. Um, so that, that's a long time anyway, especially when you have um, a, a young family uh, and also you have to consider uh, your state of mind, the state of mind of your family um, in what's going on around. So there are a lot more challenges um, that are involved, uh, but it's about trying to work it through and making the best decisions um, uh, for yourself um, and, your, and your family that, com that comes uh, initially and then uh, uh, look at what you need to do in terms of your other responsibilities. Um, so talking a bit about the transition from you know playing into commentating, uh, when did you realize it was something that you wanted to pursue and how did you go about making it happen? Oh, um, well, I, I had um, made plans of moving on and uh, uh, didn't really give it much thought what I would do after. Of course, um, uh, something uh, around cricket always would keep me interested, a bit of coaching. Um, that uh, I've always found fun. But the moment I retired, um, a, a gentleman, um, he's uh, from India, James Rigo, uh, he was um, handling the cricket production in India. He uh, mentioned to me, you know, why don't you look at doing this? And then an opportunity came my way. Uh, and it was something that I gradually got into it was not a case of uh, retiring looking to be a commentator uh, or anything like that it's something that um, uh, came my way and then um, it uh, started uh, taking its due course and um, as time went on we started planning more and more of our time and life um, around the travels and commentary um i remember reading that you you're also a highly qualified a level three qualified coach uh, is that something that you're looking at doing further down the line? Um, I do have that in mind, uh, but um, at this stage, my plans are different. So maybe about a couple of years um, down the line, when I finish um, my responsibilities in my children going to school, my son finishes in a year or so, uh, then it's something that I will really look at because I do feel it it will take a lot more of my time, and. Uh, sharing that time is a challenge so i don't really think it's uh, uh, something that i would do immediately but i do think um, i uh, will move in there soon and uh, I, I do think um, i have what it takes to guide a team and younger players and uh, try and achieve their goals i think um, I, I will enjoy that as well i think you've done some coaching at uh, at very low level at, at school level time correct um, it, it's more a case of helping around the community where I am. My, uh, I really haven't um, committed to anything uh, substantial because of the time factor and what I was doing. So I just kept, uh, kept it going because it, it was nice, uh, the balance I had in life. Uh, therefore, um, it's also a case of not overloading uh, your, your life or time because uh, time is what matters. To, to ourselves in managing ourselves and looking after ourselves and also your family. So uh, it, it, you have to be, uh, you have to have, have a good balance and, and hence um, that was what I opted for. In my free time, I would uh, help out with teams in, in our communities. All right. Um, you were here at the Sri Lanka's home series against, uh, against India. Um, you know, Sri Lanka reversed a pretty poor run of form. Um, and given the composition of the Indian team, how much do you think Sri Lanka can take from those results? I think they can take a lot because at the end of the day, it's a, sport is a confidence game and Sri Lanka had um, no confidence at all in terms of um, the, the personnel, in terms of the game plan, in terms of where they were going. And that comes when uh, that happens 
when you're unable to string a few uh, wins together. So there were lots of other issues as well. And COVID was also another part in um, wearing everyone down. Uh, so a, a win was welcome. Um, and the moment you win, it changes the outlook of how you feel. Even as a fan or, or an outsider, you'd see suddenly there is uh, some joy. Yeah, we can't be unrealistic. We got to be uh, understanding of why, who we played against, how uh, uh, strong they were. But at the end of the day, uh, Sri Lanka did what what was required, and there were some exciting performances. We, we did see a spring in um, the step of the lads, and that that's what you'd expect, and that's what a win would do for you. Uh, so I, I think it would do a lot. It'll bring about that feel good factor. It'll make that dressing room. Uh, a, a lot happier place and, and it's amazing actually when uh, you get a bit of success you suddenly see that a lot of your problems tend to disappear strangely that that, that does happen and i'm sure the sri lankan team would be feeling like that and that's a way forward so um i, I think it, it uh, we got to forget about the circumstances or the situation or who they played against at that stage you take the win and you take what comes with it and you move on um, which of these current couple of players has impressed you the most? One in the Hasaranga uh, has been outstanding for me for a few years now. Uh, I've been seeing um, seeing him play. He's been exciting. And uh, what stands out is uh, uh, the fact that he's a competitor. He's like a street fighter. He doesn't go away. He's always in your face, whether with bat, with your with ball, um, and uh, in the field. Yes, there are areas that he can improve and become a much, much better player. Uh, especially uh, in his batting, but he tends to understand what he's got. He tends to know what he can do with it. And uh, as, as I mentioned before, the key factor is that he, he wants to compete. He's always looking for a way to make things happen, and that will take him a long, long way. I think Dushman the Chamira is not too far behind either. He's exciting as well, and what he brings to the table, uh, we rarely see from other Sri Lankans. Um, a bowler consistently bowling in the 140s. He's showing variations. He's showing that uh, he's got uh, the ability, the skill, the mental uh, thought process to price batsmen out. So hoping he stays fit too. So I brought both in because um, they have been shining lights in, uh, in for, for Sri Lanka. So it was fair that I mentioned both of them. Okay. Um, so now Sri Lanka, they, they host South Africa next month. And after that, it's the, the World T20 uh, in the UAE in October. Uh, do you think this current group of players have what it takes to, firstly, to come out of the group stage, and then also when they get to Super 12 stage to, you know, to challenge and even make semifinals? Uh, I think uh, they would. I think they shouldn't be taken lightly. That's the main thing. So the South African series is going to be very, very important to make sure that you're building on what you achieved against India. If uh, they do not compete, if they do not show uh, the energy that was required or that they found against India, against South Africa, that would be a very, very big disappointment. So we're watching them closely. Uh, but I, I would think even this um, SLC T20 that was played, I think that was a good, good series for everyone to come out there, express themselves. They're suddenly feeling good about themselves. And we did see um, quite a few good performances from everyone. So the confidence level and that happiness, the feel-good factor would have been built on. Now, uh, very crucial to see uh, that they take, or it's very crucial that they take it forward against South Africa, because this would probably be the last series before the World T20. Uh, and that's this series will give the confidence for them to go in there and, and really perform and really believe in themselves. That's what it comes down to, actually. Um, they're going to the qualifiers. I think they'll get through. Two teams go forward. It will be a disaster if Sri Lanka don't. Uh, but that's on the negative line. But I do think they'll do well and, and, and get through to the uh, Super 12. From there on, I'm not banking on the fact that uh, they'll go on to win the competition. But I think uh, they will be competitive. And they could be looked at as party poopers. Uh, for many other teams if they do tend to take this team um, lightly. But once you, you start moving, uh, who knows what can happen. We'll always hope for the best. But that was me being quite realistic. And where Sri Lanka are going with their cricket, it's going to be slow. We can't expect them to just show up and, and beat everyone. Uh, they'll have their day. They'll perform really well. And gradually, 
get into that groove of being more and more consistent. So I, I, I think this is me being realistic. They, they will, uh, I'm hoping they compete, but I'm very sure that they'll surprise a few. Uh, so most of the teams haven't had time to prepare um, for this World T20. Um, so who do you think start as favorites and could we maybe see a, you know, a team like Ireland or uh, an outside team making the finals and maybe even winning the tournament? Um, I think Ireland have improved. I think a lot of the teams are dangerous. It's, it's that type of format and uh, with so many tournaments being played around the world, players do have experience. But um, looking at the teams, I think uh, West Indies, New Zealand, and India, I think those three are the team. Those three teams uh, are the ones that will push for the major honors, uh, simply because of uh, the depth, the type of cricket that they play, the understanding they have uh, amongst those players uh, seems to be a lot greater than um, the other teams, and they they seem to be in a in a situation where mentally they are in a stronger place because of the depth they're able to send different teams to different parts rest players and that will keep them sharper mentally uh, especially in these uh, difficult times so i think uh, those are those are reasons that um, will take them forward and of course new zealand you they always compete in world tournaments and uh, after winning um, the world test championship finalists in the last world cup um, you know they, they got that little winning mentality about themselves. So they will be very, very dangerous. Okay, so um, going back to your international career, I think you played for around a decade, uh, 97 to 2007. Um, how would you describe your career? Um, were you happy to you know, retire when you did? Uh, yes, uh, I have no regrets at all with the decisions that I have made, uh, but at that stage, Around 2005, I made I retired in 2007. Around 2005, I made the decision that um, I will uh, give it my go or all, all to the 2007 World Cup if it, if I make it uh, there uh, well and good. Uh, let's see how it goes. But 2007, after the World Cup, that I would be moving on. I had made my plans um, on what I would be doing with the family and uh, what I wanted to do. Um, not in concrete regarding the con uh, the commentary, but with uh, with other things I had lined up. Uh, I had already started on uh, my coaching credentials uh, because um, yeah, did enjoy uh, uh, my, my career because I always felt proud to play for Sri Lanka and uh, the ups and downs that we did have. But it also at certain stages became pretty pretty hard towards the latter stages when um, I felt. Um, I was the scapegoat at every stage uh, and uh, yeah, it became a little hard. So I just thought um, maybe there are other things in life as well and you've got to be happy in what you do. But now looking back, I'm um, quite happy with uh, the time that I moved on and where I am in life. Um, how disappointing was it, you know, being in such a good team, especially the 2007 World Cup final to, to get that far and then to lose? Uh, the way that you all did, uh, how disappointing was it? And uh, I mean, looking back, was there anything that you think we could have done differently in that scenario? Um, it was very disappointing. It was a sad end to that World Cup. It was a great campaign. We we had a, a great a good balance. Uh, we again, uh, tactically, we were savvy. We knew when to do what. We understood each other really well. And the final was something we were looking forward to. But on that day, nothing really went our way. Initially, the rains came. The match uh, was reduced by a few overs, and we, we don't like these stop-start games. We we like to play all the way, go get into our groove, and keep going um, about things. And then the way Gilchrist bat batted, what, what could you do? He just came and slapped everything. He had had a bad uh, uh, World Cup semi-final. Once he got out, he thrown his bat away and he said, look, if you make the final, I'm going to block three balls and then I'm going to slog everything. And that's what he did. Got 149. Uh, we were in the hunt, uh, but unfortunately, the rains came again and uh, derailed everything. There were also misunderstandings in how the rules to be applied, which again went, went against us. So it was uh, something like it was just not to be and Australia thoroughly deserved it. They played really, really well, a strong team. Uh, so it was just not, not to be. Whenever we look like we can lift our heads, there was something that was happening beyond our control that 
really didn't help and it was more disappointing from a personal point of view that i had to go out to bat my or uh, play my last innings uh, in in the pitch dark so i couldn't see anything so that that was a little bit of a of a shame but um, yeah yeah now it was good fun um so i you you were recognized for your your exploits in in one day cricket but um, i remember reading that your test average is actually above 50 when you when you were an opener um is that something that you preferred doing and were you disappointed when you were moved down the order and as a batsman how difficult is it to adapt you know when you're doing so well at the at the top of the order to be brought down to the middle like how is it difficult is it difficult to adapt and how did you adapt to that change uh well uh, again there are mixed feelings there because i grew up as an open i was initially picked as an open and yes uh, i do average uh, above 50 uh in in test cricket uh, as as an opener i had three test hundreds they were all made as an opener and all away and my game was such a game i, I wasn't extravagant like a mile jayawardhan or sarat jayasurya i was more a grinder and i knew to score runs probably not the most technically correct but i i knew it and i could spend time out there so that's what my first class record or my school record everything uh suggest but um in the one days it worked the experiment of uh, using other qualities that i had really uh, worked for uh, sri lanka the fact that i read the game well and i'm uh, i'm a lot calmer uh when decisions need need to be made those type of things uh, it did work but batting at 5 and 6 and in the uh, when i said it became harder in the one days also i started to be moved to number 7 and 8 which doesn't suit me i'm not a a six a hitter um, i also need time to get in and control in it that's when uh, um, the real results uh, were coming through but then the team had uh, uh, needs and they they moved me around which uh, probably uh, didn't work as well as uh, i thought but uh, at the end of the day as i always said you know could have been so much worse we've always had a good time you um, you know achieved a lot um, of experiences there's plenty memories friends and um, when whenever you look back yeah there is a lot of happiness in in what did happen but um, in test cricket uh, I, i would rather stay at uh, the opening spot because it, it just didn't work for me um you played at a time when you know cricket was a lot different back then when when you were uh, when you were in the international scene um a big a, a big talking point has been about this fitness about how much uh, weight you give to fitness over a player's talent and uh, player's performance um what's your take do you do you feel that given the circumstances of how cricket has changed that it's correct to uh, focus on fitness or do you feel like there has to be a balance which needs to be struck no there's no right or wrong it's what you need to do at that particular stage um to shake up the system uh, to get the players to sharpen up if needed you, you just got to do what you need to do and i think that it's a case of Uh, Russell, I think you muted. Sorry. Yeah. For... Uh, can I ask a question again, Russell? Then yeah, okay, okay. might be yeah. Um, so yeah. So what's your take on um, this debate about uh, fitness versus uh, player talent? Do you think uh, one deserves more weight than the other, or do you think there needs to be a balance that has to be struck? No, you'd make a decision on what uh, needs to be done actually. if we looked at sri lanka cricket um, uh, of late there not been any performances there not been any results uh, there haven't been any stars if you pick up a pick a team there's no one that picks themselves up or picks themselves in the past if you pick a team uh, in the time we played there were seven eight players who you write uh, write their name down just like that so then you don't have to consider anything but right now you're looking for a combination uh, uh you're looking for a team you need uh, performances you need to win for many reasons so hence uh, you're trying to cover all your bases so i can certainly understand why fitness uh, uh, is a factor it is a factor because the fitter you are the the, uh, the better you play you score 20 players are scoring 20 not getting more is that a case of fitness if you're fit then you think clearly you're able to go on and perform for longer so all these type of things do come in uh so you you actually have to make decisions at that particular time and uh, with um, sri lanka not being able to pick players 
or totally on performances, then you're looking for people who are determined. You're looking for people who want to push that bar. You're looking for people who really want to take that next step uh, and make this team better. So it's a case of making decisions or for what needs to be achieved or to get a result. So um, it's a case of something we needed to look at this stage. I got, I got no problem with it. I, I wouldn't say any of our players, yeah, yeah they're talented, but I don't think anyone can say, no, I have to be in this team. So forget my fitness, pick me. No one can say that. Um, maybe uh, you go back in, in the past, uh, Arvind De Silva, Sanat Jai, Surya, no one spoke about their fitness, but they were performing. They were always picking themselves. So you, so you, you, you uh, got no issue with it. None of the other factors come into it. But at this stage, you had nothing to rely on. So you have to try and create or make uh, that better athlete who will give you better performances. So it, it, it's, uh, I, I got no issues, issues with it. Um, if, if you can name or give me one player that this player has to be in the team because of his performances, um, then um, I might change the way I think of, or feel about it. But uh, I don't think you will give me any. Um. You mentioned Sanat Jayasuriya. Um, you spent most of your career um, under his leadership uh, when he was a captain. Uh, but you, you had several other captains you played under as well. Uh, is Sanat the best captain you played under? Um, and also, we know him as a cricketer, but what was he like as a captain? Uh, to me, the best captain would be Mahela. Uh, managed the team better. Tactically, he was also very good. But Sanat, uh, as a captain, was good. He he had had a knack of uh, anything he touches turned to gold type of thing. Uh, but um, tactically or uh, making plans of how from A to B to C, uh, I think Mahela, Mahela was better and in handling uh, players too. Uh, but um, Sanat was very aggressive. He's such a competitor. He lets you know his thoughts, whereas Mahela would uh, have a bit more um, time uh, for a person and he makes sure that he gets his message across and uh, addresses everyone uh, uh, differently. But both very, very successful and uh, wonderful players. Um, you were also involved with the Indian Cricket League uh, in 2007, uh, which obviously had a very controversial uh, end. Um, were you disappointed with how the tournament was perceived and the furrow that it created when it, when it started? Uh, yeah, the response... Uh, wasn't um, positive as we would have liked. But uh, again, it was something I, I had retired. I, I came out of retirement playing that. So it was something for me to do and always a positive. It, it ended up being fun. Actually ended up making a lot more friends um, uh, than in, our, in my playing career when you talk about uh, opposition players, etc. Uh, so it, it worked really well for me. It, uh, yeah, As you said, um, uh, it did bring out something which everyone else picked up on and cricket has gone off to a, a different level. So um, at the end of the day, uh, for cricket, uh, lots of positives have come out. And personally, for me, I think it, it was a positive. And when it did uh, go down, I had already uh, moved on from it as well. So um, I, I, mean, I was in a great space. Do you think you would have uh, suited the modern game in terms of now we are seeing uh, not just T20, now we have the 100 also. So the game is obviously evolving uh, since since you were playing. Do you think you could have you would have enjoyed uh, playing cricket at you know in the in, in its current form? Oh, certainly, certainly the game has changed, and you'd like to do different things. The rewards are fantastic, so that's uh, another motivation uh, as well. But if you took the game that I played at that particular time, it wouldn't have suited the cricket now. Uh, th that's a fact. But just as you said, the game's evolving. It's also up to us to change our game to suit what was required. What I was doing at that stage for the team and for myself um, was perfect. But as things change, you also have to change. And I do back myself to have made those changes and, and, and done what was required to perform and uh, uh, to make a difference to my team. So yeah, the answer is simply yes. Okay. Uh, what's the funniest thing that, that happened to you um, on the cricket field during your career? Oh, oh, great things. Well, the best sledge, of course, happened in, in uh, the final of the, the World Cup. Um, I used to love my chocolate. So the day before the World Cup in Barbados, I went down to the store 
got a chocolate and some water. I had $5 in my pocket, but the lady said seven. So I was now wondering whether I go upstairs or what do I do then? Just from behind me, uh, someone said, uh, oh, here you go, mate. And it was Andrew Simon. He gave me $2. So I said, I'll pay back. He said, no, 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 don't worry, blah, blah, blah. The next day, the game on, and Gilchrist had gone berserk. And towards the end of the inning, everyone runs on the middle of the pitch. So it was the Aussies towards the end, uh, Michael Clark and the Simons running on the middle. We're going from long off to long on when we're changing over. Um, everyone yaps, things that I can't repeat here. And um, uh, the batsman uh, sledging back at uh, the fielders, you know, stay off the wicket. Basically, that was the, uh, the, the conversation or the arguments about. And I was going from mid wicket to mid wicket. When I was coming near the pitch, that's when it's your turn to back the player or the teammate who's been having a go before. And um, Simons was sledging the other player running across, but suddenly from the corner of his eye, he saw me coming in before I could say anything, stopped sledging the other player halfway, and he went, and don't you dare say anything because you owe me two bucks. And it, it was a moment where everyone just stopped and, and laughed, and the two batsmen as well. You know, it was a... Uh, it wasn't too harsh, but had a lot of meaning into what, what was happening. And I, th I thought that was a, a cool moment that we all shared there. That's all the time we have for today. Um, thank you for joining us, Russell. Uh, and to our viewers, uh, thank you for tuning in. Uh, and we hope to see you in our next episode. Take care and stay safe.